official. The Yankees will not see the postseason. But the bigger storyline is the end of the Derek Jeter era. The captain's career doesn't have a fairy tale ending like many would like to see, but we talk about his legacy today. Uh, Stephen A. Smith, how will you remember Derek Jeter? I remember him as a champion, one of the greatest champions, one of the greatest leaders, one of the greatest ambassadors, if not the greatest ambassador of a particular professional sport that I have ever seen in my lifetime. And it has been an honor and a privilege, me as a diehard Yankee fan, to see this man do what he's done throughout his career. Skip Bayless. The season hasn't been the greatest. We understand that. Man's 40 years old. I expected nothing else. Batting 253, recent 0 for 28 uh, slump. No doubt about it. We understand all of that. But this man is not the reason that the Yankees are not in the postseason. He is not the reason that the Yankees have flopped this year. Outside of him, you could barely find out who's on the roster for crying out loud with the bunch of no names they had in their lineup. You look at 80% of their rotation, Yvonne Nova, Michael Pineda, CC Sebastian, uh, Masahiro Tanaka, all of them went down this season. 80% of their rotation was decimated. But Derek Jeter went out there and played more than 140 games this year at age 40, his last season in Major League Baseball. We look at these numbers. Sixth most all times in hits. One of the six greatest Yankees of all time. One of the three greatest shortstops of all time. If you just look at some of the things going around, here's some of the other stats that I've got, Skip, in terms of Jeter as a shortstop. All time, Jeter is first in hits from the shortstop position, third in doubles, third in home runs, fifth in RBIs, first in runs scored. This dude is a first ballot Hall of Famer, and I see so many people being so critical, talking about, well, is he really all that? He's never won a league MVP award, even though there was at least one particular year where the Tim Kirkchins of the world and others thought he should have won. Well, get Tim Kirkchin, I spoke to yesterday, always an honor and privilege to talk to the encyclopedia it is, <laughs> there is of, of Major League Baseball. This guy was pointing out how Willie Mays only had two MVP awards, and he's the great Willie Mays. So we take all of these things into consideration. You don't necessarily have to be known as the greatest. You don't necessarily have to have numbers that says you are unquestionably the greatest. But in a league where thousands upon thousands upon thousands of players have existed over the decades, when you talk about Derek Jeter... You're talking about top five, top ten in most categories when it comes to shortstop, if not all of them. And when I consider that and him being a five-time world champion and him being a dude working in the bubble that is New York, the Mecca, for the Yankees, the most storied franchise in sports annals, doing what he did, the way that he did it, never getting in any trouble, always conducting himself first class. His decisions off the field have been nothing short of impeccable. Just check the resume. I look at all of those different things. And the fact that this dude was still about winning, that it was a priority, that he was about championships, that he was about doing things the right way, it was an absolute honor to watch Derek Jeter. I have not a negative word to say about this man. I love him. I'm going to miss him. It was great just seeing him a few weeks ago and talking to him at the Barclays Center. Just an honor, man. And, and I, I can do nothing but say thank you for all the great years you gave me as a diehard Yankee fan. It was truly an honor and a privilege to watch this man play baseball. I second all your emotions today on Derek Jeter. One quick stat before I get into what I will remember most from Ian O'Connor on ESPN.com today is that Derek Jeter has now played in 2,903 games, 2,903. Not once, not once was he ever thrown out of a game. Guys get thrown out, as we know, managers, players, seems like on a nightly basis. It's just what happens in the sport. You argue with the umpire. You occasionally get tossed, not one time. And you always say class personified. On and off the field to me, Derek was class personified. Now, what will I remember most? I must tell you, as an athlete to me, Stephen A., he's been a little hard to figure out. So what I will remember most is, here is an obvious first ballot Hall of Famer who was never what I would call extraordinarily talented in, in any single phase of the game. Not extraordinarily talented. We're not talking about LeBron James here. We're talking about 
Is he the strongest? No, he's not the strongest guy. Career high was 24 home runs, 102 RBIs. Not bad. Not great. Was he ever the fastest guy? No, he had a career high 34 stolen bases. Not bad. Not great. Was he, did he have the most range of any shortstop ever? Obviously, he did not. Did he have the greatest hands of any shortstop ever? No. Were we talking about the Wizard of Oz, Ozzie Smith here, Omar Vizquel, Louis Aparicio? No, we're not talking about that. Very good. Maybe not great, even though he did win five gold gloves, which is shocking to me. But in the end, to me, Derek Jeter took everything that God did give him and he applied mind over body every pitch, every inning, every night he ever played. Every, every pitch, he gave you every ounce he had to give you, no matter whether it was in April or October. He gave you every ounce he had mentally as well as physically. And when the moments were the biggest, Yankee Stadium, New York Yankee moments, as you well know, Nobody's ever been better than this man because he did somehow will himself into a place of super heroism. Like he, was, he became a superhero w when the pressure was greatest. Well, again, the attributes, the talent wasn't the greatest, but he became the greatest in the greatest moments. And it's all about will. It's, it's all about all those intangibles we talk about. And, and if there's any message here for the many talented kids we talk about on this show every day is, can you bring it every day? Mm -hmm. I know some days you get up, you just don't feel like it. You know you're really, really gifted and you can get away with it today. You don't have to give it all today. Derek Jeter gave it all for 2,903 games to date. Every, uh, listen, Stephen, uh, you'll attest to this. Did he ever take an inning off, a pitch off? Did he ever give up in that bat? Eh. You know, I'm, I'm already three for three. I'm just going to get... No! Not a pitch, not an inning, not a month. He gave you every ounce. And he, in a way, he overachieved into first ballot Hall of Fameness, which is, is unbelievable because the, the talent is... It's very good, but not great in the end. Well, I think the thing about it is, is that <clears throat> what Derek Jeter really, really you know, illuminates is the fact that, you know, he validates why we love some of these guys the way that we do. He wasn't Michael Jordan talent-wise. No. But he was very Michael Jordan-esque in this particular respect, Skip. He never cheated you. And when we think about guys and we think about the marquee athletes and we talk about watching sports, particularly in this day and age with the economic troubles that we have as a nation, with the money that it costs to go to a game, with the investment emotionally, monetarily that you make in sports, etc., it's just great to rely on somebody from the perspective of knowing that they will never cheat you. They're going to have better days. They're going to have worse days. But what they're never going to do, the one thing, the one element of consistency that they're going to provide you night in and night out is that when you come to see them play, you will never look at them and say, I think they could have given me more. Hmm. And that is what Derek Jeter is all about. And that's why he's so beloved and that's why he's been so celebrated. Because when you talk about an athlete doing stuff the right way, even though he did a lot, he did everything right off the field. The fact is what we're truly appreciating is that he seemed to be about everything that you want your professional athlete that you support to be about. That doesn't mean he was literally perfect. We don't know every, every little thing about his life, but we don't care either. Mm. As long as you're obeying the law and what have you, we don't particularly care. The bottom line is we want to make sure that you're going out there and you're never cheating us. And Derek Jeter was that guy. It's just that simple. Mm. And that's why the commercials whether it be with the Jordan brand and tipping the cap or it's with the Gatorade commercial. Uh, it, 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 the commercials are just incredibly apropos because that's basically what they're saying. Respect for what this man gave you on a night in, night out basis. He will, never be, cheated you. He will be greatly missed. Uh, Dear Jeter, I've been told that class and elegance never goes out of style. You wear both very well. That's how we remember Derek Jeter. Coming up, 